G'day guys, welcome back. It's been a while since I've had the 24 out, so I just thought I'd um, put something together while it was out. I've had it out the last couple of nights, um, just doing a bit of planetary, just getting used to the gear, and um, uh, and it's been good. It's been a good uh, learning exercise, but um, there's a couple of things that um, everyone asked for and just wanted to know um, how it was, how it was built, um, what has been uh, any problems? Has there been any problems with it? Has there been um, any things that I had to change or I'd look to change? And basically, it's it's been spot on. So um, obviously, the the one thing that's that's most problematic is its size. So it won't fit out most doors, um, and that's something you sort of got to plan for. I didn't realise that at the time that it wouldn't fit out of our door. Um, downstairs, I thought it might go close, but then thinking about when you put it all together and the bearings and stuff like that, so it only just misses out by a little bit, but it still misses out. So um, uh, since then, I've got the wheelbarrow handles, so I'll be able to leave it in the garage and um, uh, wheel it around the yard and do whatever I have to do there with that. So. That's uh, less of a problem. It's just something you've got to plan for and know what you're doing and know where you're going to go. So the other thing, of the only other things I've changed or made a note of um, originally, and I'll put some other footage up on the screen, was just the, um, the top of the secondary mirror. Um, all of the adjustment points, they, uh, they were just close to the breathing holes at the top up there. So. I actually flipped around that um, container there for the, the bolts. And then because it was a three way, so you got three veins, three bolts, three holes on top, they always seemed to match up. So when I turned it over, it, um, it, it, it basically moved the threads in between the holes. So it wasn't really a problem. It's just I'm a bit fastidious with stuff like that. Um, another one of the things that I, um, uh, that I spent a little bit more time on was around the back and the back shaft. Again, um, I'll put some video up here and just the how well machined everything was and how the, the tolerances were superb. But um, I just made it a little, just put a little bit more wiggle room in there. When you play with the clutch on the back, it was a, a little bit tight, which was good but um, I've just made it just a little bit easier. So got sandpaper in there and just um, dialed down the shaft diameter, like by a bee's dick, literally uh, not very much. Just just opened up the tolerances there. So um, that's about it really. Um, everything else has been, has been spot on. The go-to system that comes with it, this, the on-step, it's, um, uh, it's not uh, a normal system. It's not like your Skywatcher or what have you, but there's an Android app and um, it's pretty easy to use once you uh, work out, um, under understand the parameters. So basically you build the scope and all you do then is put it down to zero degrees, point it true north, and then you um, initialize it and set that for home and then you can um, go from there and it'll basically just go to, and it's fairly close to the planets and, and what have you in the sky um, uh, without a star alignment. So most nights, if I was to start um, imaging the planets, they're the first thing to be seen. So um, you can't really star align it, but that gets you pretty close to the mark. And as soon as you can lock on it, you sink all the planets, you, you find a target and then you sink it and it gets better. So, and of course, there's the um, three, four, five star alignments if you want, you can do two and um, it, it's pretty good. So I mainly um, have it, well, this is a, I think this is 8,500 8, millimeter focal length. So when you're doing planetary, it doesn't have to be too spot on, but I have the app on, open, and I just adjust it on the fly because um, we're talking about very, very fine uh, movements can make a big difference on the screen so but it handles it really well and it's much easier than my 16 inch dob 
So um, on the home aid equatorial platform. So that's about it. Um, electronic focuser. It's um, it's pretty good. I'll probably um, reduce the amount of steps that it um, that it does for each movement, just to see how that goes. So this is the image train I've been using um, of late. So we've got a CBIT Optics um, 4x Barlow with high UV transmission. And with the Barlows, it's not telecentric. So the further away the camera is from the top of the Barlow, um, it will increase the magnification. So with these spaces in here, we're looking about four and a half at the moment and I've got other spaces I can put in on the bottom side between that and the element. So when I want to get it up to 5x or beyond, I can do that. Um, filter wheel, got adjustment um, selection one, that's RGB, two, IR, eight, 685, Three's IR 850, four's methane band 890, and five is UV. So ADC for the orientation on the 24, the ADC has got to point down because of the location of the focuser on this one. It points, the, the handles point straight down for me. On the 16, the focus is up here diagonal so I actually point the handles are aligned that way so you've got to align the focal plane with the horizon so when you adjust the knobs it um, it, it corrects for the horizon because the light will spread through that vertical line um, so the ZWO ADC really good and at the moment um, the Mars 462 mono. Um, I've also got the the Neptune C2 and it's the 462C camera sensor but it's twice the size so at 8000 millimeters it's pretty hard to find um, a target with this chip because it's so small and I usually use that or I've got the QHY um, 585C and it's got even a bigger chip than the other one so I normally start out there and I'll shoot a couple of color um, captures and then I might move on to this so I was imaging Neptune last night and um, used the mono cam so that, that's really good for the smaller uh, less bright targets as well so um, that's about it at the moment 7x50 finder scope Telrad, which I mainly use. Um, yeah, that's about it. It's been pretty good, pretty easy, yeah, except for the um, moving it around out through the doors. So it is what it is at this stage, but um, really, really happy with it. So hopefully a bit later on, um, we'll get some good seeing and Last night was seeing was all right, but the transparency was pretty average. But the um, this will shine in good conditions. So at the moment, in average seeing the 16s, yeah, I've got a 16. It will do something pretty similar. So, but when when it gets good, that's when we'll see this shine. So hopefully soon. Anyway, I've rambled on for a fair bit. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.